Brooke Leanne, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Julian Leanne, I'm a sophomore. I'm Sean Bass, is a little clarity, and I'm a senior. And I'm Steve Gert, and I'm a senior. And this is our online presentation on asset and liability management within a bank holding company. In banking, asset and liability management is the practice of managing risks that arise due to mismatches between the assets and liabilities, debts, and assets of the bank. This can also be seen in insurance. Banks face several risks such as liquidity risks, interest rate risks, credit risk, and operational risk. Asset liability management is a strategic management tool to manage interest rate risk and liquidity risk faced by banks, other financial service companies, and corporations. In this presentation, we will discuss some aspects of asset liability management. There are asset management, liability management, risk management, and tools and techniques involved with asset and liability management. Asset management. Asset management is a process used to track fixed assets. It is used for various reasons like preventive maintenance or to defer theft. It is a system for managing equipment and other assets. The asset manager's functions will also vary depending on the size of the owner's property holdings. However, in all cases, asset managers take on the role of CEO of the respective portfolios. Each property is in reality a business unto itself, and heading up the corporation which those businesses form is the asset manager. Envision an orchestra. At the conductor's podium is the asset manager, setting strategy and monitoring property performance along with the owner's objectives. In order to effectively execute their function, the asset managers must be like true entrepreneurs, coordinating the activities of a broad range of disciplines which compose the various musical groups of the orchestra. Sitting in the seat of first violin is the property manager. To avoid confusion, it is necessary to clarify the difference between the role of the property manager and that of the asset manager. The property manager monitors the on-site staff at a building to make sure that the operational objectives for the property as set out in the strategic plan, which the asset manager puts together, are being carried out. The property manager is the primary point of contact with respect to tenant relations. Property managers are responsible for facility staffing, bill payment, rent collection, lease administration, building maintenance, and execution of work orders. They are also responsible for purchasing supplies and achieving competitive pricing on goods and services used at the building. Additional duties may include approving service contracts for elevator, garbage removal, cleaning, etc., and preparing a first cut annual budget. With the overall objective to maximize value, the asset manager's role can be seen consisting of three main steps. Analyzing the portfolio, formulating a strategy to increase cash flow, and implementation. To guide this process, the asset manager will prepare a blueprint or business plan for each property which he or she will monitor and update on a quarterly basis. The plan will include a mix of financial, marketing, and operating strategies which the asset manager will develop based on each property's specific situation. It should reflect both the owner's investment objectives as well as the realities of the local economic environment. For overseas investors, this information is especially important as the asset manager is relied on to be the ownership's eyes and ears providing sound advice based on accurate and current knowledge. In this section, we will discuss liability management and how the art of managing your liabilities has evolved over time. Liability management involves three major factors. First and most importantly, using your liabilities to make a profit. The usage of these techniques were not thought of until the 1960s and 1970s. Secondly, hedging your risk. And lastly, paying attention to the maturity of the liabilities on the balance sheet. The old ways of banking only focused on the maturity of their assets, but we will discuss later the importance of using the liabilities in everyday banking. Liability management was created for the purpose of controlling your liabilities and using them to make a profit. Banks always wanted to control their assets, but eventually liability management was a necessity to the banks because of fluctuating interest rates. With these interest rates moving all over the place, banks needed ways of income that were never thought of before. This made banks compete with each other for deposits to get extra cash. This also began the evolution of liability management. 
The traditional asset management approach to banking is based on the assumption that a bank's liabilities are both relatively stable and unmarketable. Historically, each bank relied on a market for its deposit IOUs that was influenced by the bank's location. This also means that any changes in the extent of the market were beyond a bank's immediate control. In the 1960s and 1970s, this assumption had to be abandoned. The change first occurred in the United States, where the rising interest rates, together with regulations limiting the interest rates banks could pay, made it extremely difficult for banks to attract and maintain their deposits. This meant bankers had to devise a variety of alternative devices to acquire funds. As previously stated, bankers needed to find new ways to acquire funds. Some of these new ways included repurchase agreements or repos and certificates of deposit or CDs. Repurchase agreements involve the selling of the securities on the condition that the buyers will repurchase these securities at a stated date in the future. And certif certificates of deposit can be traded in the secondary market. Having discovered new ways to acquire funds, banks no longer waited for funds to arrive through normal course of business. The new approaches enable banks to manage the liability as well as the asset side of their balance sheets. Such active purchasing and selling of funds by banks allows bankers to exploit profitable lending opportunities without being limited by a lack of funds for loans. Liability management is an excellent way for banks to make profits, and it has been essential to the evolution of our banking system. Within this section, we'll look at risks and the management of risks within a bank holding company. In this section, we'll talk about three different areas. The first will be the framework, management and risk management framework that needs to be integrated into a successful bank holding company. The second will be economic capital risk. Within this section, we'll talk about three different areas, credit risk, market risk, funding and liquidity risk. And the third area that we'll discuss is operational risk. Operational risk will be discussed later as well. Establishing a framework to deal with risks is fundamental in many bank holding companies. In many cases, a significant cause of failure can be tied directly to an incomplete or absent framework for managing risk. Within this section, we'll address different areas, four different areas, knowing your business, ranking your risks, quantifying your risk appetite, merging your risks, and establishing a governance for risk. The first step in the development process of a good framework is knowing your business and understanding your risks. Different organizations run different risks and, and have different risk profiles. Just because an organization is in the same industry and or uses the same products or services does not mean it has the same risks needs. Size does matter and one size does not fit all. The example that we'll use in this slide is the example of two different commercial banks. Both have sim similar assets and liabilities, but their growth is at two different stages. One bank is in a better market, and the other bank is in a lower developing market. Bank A is in a less developed market. It may gravitate towards products with more risk because they might be looking to generate higher returns. Bank B, however, is in a better market and may gravitate more towards lower risk products because they may have a larger market share within their current market. The second step in the development process in the risk management framework is ranking your portfolio of risks. Some risks may be more difficult to manage than others and the process of assessing the level of importance of each individual organization is necessary. Questions to ask bank managers when analyzing and ranking a portfolio of risks include which ones can be easily refinanced or liquidated and which ones are most detrimental to the business strategy of the bank. These can be very important because when looking at the current crisis and what had just happened, many banks in ranking a portfolio of risk may not have asked